Institute or Safari. In 1974, the institute was renamed as Niri by the then Prime Minister Shimati Indra Gandhi. The institute has five zonal laboratories located in Chennai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Kolkata, and Mumbai, besides the headquarters at Nagpur. Niri's vision can be stated as leadership in environmental science and engineering for sustainable development, and Niri's mission is continue to strive for providing innovative and effective solutions for environmentally sustainable development and to help government, industry, and the society, especially the 800 million underprivileged people of India. With this introduction, I request Mr. Kumbhare to escort the dignitaries to place the dais, please. I request the director, sir, to welcome the dignitaries with a plant sampling. Our esteemed guest, I request, request Director Sir Dr. Atul Gandhi to give a welcome speech, please. Very good morning to all. You are all welcome to this 66th year, or we have completed 66 years of our services to nation as Navy. It's our foundation day. This is like 67 foundation day, 66 years of the services. Or you can say 66 years of celebration. As told, so first of all, we congratulate you all and extend my best wishes for coming years. Probably next year, I am not be here as a director. Because this year I will be super happy. So, I am listening as I know I do Navy was established in 1958 as well as Central Public Health Research in the Institute which was, as everybody knows, which was in the wake of the pandemic attacks, in the wake of epidemic that time, the this epidemic in Delhi. And there was a need felt to establish an institute which is dedicated to public health engineering. It was the major reason for the and uh, this epidemic was linked to the public sewer system and the contamination which is coming due to the improper management of sewage. And therefore, it was established in 1958 as a central public health research institute. And obviously, in latter years, as the came out of the work of the area of research increased, it encompassed all the amount of good things. In 1974, then Prime Minister, Mrs. India, and the Indian Business Institute, as National Environment to Engineering Research Institute, very popularly known as Delhi. And since then, and since 1958, this year we are with this today we are we have completed 66 glorious years of our services to the environment and nation. And Navy has been coping up with the challenges which environments are the environmental issues are putting before us throughout the years. Right from the response treatment, water treatment, air pollution, environmental impact assessment, risk assessment, and so on and so forth. To climate change and the sustainability issues which are of the current talks. And Navy has been modifying itself. Navy has been modifying its research endeavors in such a way that we keep on giving solutions to nation to towards the sustainable development since beginning. And we are continuing with that still till now. There is a time. Of course, we are doing 
our best. But really, this is a time when we, we also have to remember these stalwarts. Keeping aside the directors, including our crew, keeping aside the directors of this institute, there are many senior scientists, many stalwarts who have contributed to the success of Navy, contributed to the development of Navy. So we are pioneering research. Starting from zero, or you can say clean slate, when the challenges are entirely new. And these challenges are keeping, keep on coming every year. And we also have to work like that. I cannot make all the visionaries that time. I have seen many of them. And they have contributed immensely to this institute and development of this institute. And this is the foundation day is the time when we must only remember their contributions. We are in the era when we need to change. Before that, I would like to press uh, before the honorable uh, guests that Navy is being estimated as far as uh, external cash flow or the funding is concerned or the publication is concerned or as far as the projects are concerned. Whatever parameters are there to measure the success of the institute. We are all on, we are having a very good uh, kind of standing there. And credit goes to all of this stuff. Directly just near instrument to facilitate it. Really, it is a credit of all this stuff, which are working day and night for the success of the institute. But there should not be a complacency. And we are into the era where we are thinking of two three things now. One is what we call right now is the Anurth Cloud. So, 75 years of uh, our independence are completed and we are approaching towards the 100th year of, 100 years of our independence. That is in 2047. And government, and the think tank of the government, is pressing us hard to think about 2047, not the immediate one or two years of successes and failures. What Navy has to look like, what Navy has to do, and what Navy should be known as in 2047. That is the thing which we have to think, start thinking right now. And especially, this is the onus on the all young scientists or middle management scientists who are likely to be continuing to the 40s or maybe around that. And we will have necessarily Transferring pattern to next generation of scientists, we probably will see. And two days back, I was sitting in some high level committee of the secretaries, and they were all asking that you think big, don't think small things like right? this technology, small technology. You think big for the nation. What Navy should do for nation in 2047? Single 2.0 program, but it's a very big thing. What kind of funding, what kind of manpower, and don't get into the mode of the yeah, whole is yeah, I don't have manpower. Because immediately when somebody tells you, I am also part of that, immediately our first thing is to avoid that. We say that this, this cannot happen, I don't have manpower, I don't have funding. What was told to us was that you think we you make a plan. Maybe it is 5,000 crores. Maybe it is 10,000 crores, does not matter. You think big, then that will be assessed and whatever funding and whatever manpower is required, that will be supplied. You assume that it is there. But if, if it is there, can you do that? Do you have that kind of thinking? And the way which is to be, the way, the way it is to be done is start thinking for 2030, start thinking for 2040, and then 47. It should be perfectly in the time series. So what you do in 2030 must have some planning for the 2040, or what you do in 2040 must have some planning for the 2040. That is the think tank of this nation is actually looking at on the research institutions right now. Maybe it is water treatment, maybe it is wastewater treatment, maybe it is air pollution, maybe it is soil waste, hazardous waste. Maybe it is climate change and sustainability. And for which you have to put everything into a different framework of science and different framework of the technologies. 
per se, technologies of environment are much different from the technologies of this chemistry and physics. But inputs are things. Whereas, environmental scientist, if he develops a technology, is up against the dynamic situation of the varying inputs. So, technology has to be different. Environmental technologies have to be thought in a different way. And if you take the buzzwords of right now about the climate change and sustainability, you must think in terms of resource, resource utilization and risk management. And apart from that, these are the three basic elements based on which environmental science has to be built on. And we must have a different kind of scientific thinking for the environmental technologies, which will emerge by 2047, start planning for that. And then, because it's a, we are part of this nation, we have some regulations, so we also have to address the needs of the nation. We will have to address the regulations of the nations and the policies of the nations. And obviously, as an institute, we have to survive as an institute, and there are a lot of things other than technical and scientific things. So, supporting departments, they also have to work hard. And that is why we have this year we have restructured our institute of scientific manpower. It's a regrouping, it's not restructuring, it's a regrouping to align yourself to the new wants of this science, new demands of the science and technology, and what we should look at. 2047, and I, I appeal to all my scientists, young scientists, to start working on that right from this, this day of foundation, it's an auspicious day. Otherwise, we are working fine. We are working to the needs of the nations, to our current nations. We have to think big and we have to plan big. So, again, I welcome all my retired scientists, all my staff. Our chief, our honorable guests, and everybody here on this 66th celebration of the Navy Foundation Day. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, sir, for your motivating words. Uh, we now look forward to listening to our esteemed speakers, uh, with starting with uh, our distinguished speaker, uh, Professor B. N. Goswami. Uh, before we start listening to him, I would like to uh, read about his achievements. Uh, Professor B. N. Goswami uh, completed his pre-university education in 1966 and uh, followed by his master's and PhD in plasma physics as, uh, at Physical Research Laboratory, Ahmedabad, in 1976. Then he moved to uh, for his postdoctoral research at MIT. Uh, MIT and Cambridge University, USA, followed by three years at NASA DSFC, USA, where he worked on the emerging field of monsoon modeling. In 1983, he joined the Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore, where he served up, up till 2006, assuming leadership of Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune, in 2006. Professor Goswami transformed the institute into a world-class research organization. The improved scale of weather and climate forecast in the country today is the direct result of his vision, strongly supported by the Ministry of Earth Sciences in computing infrastructure development and capacity building in weather and climate model development. Professor Goswami has served on many national and international committees, including the Joint Scientific Committee of World Climate Research Programme. Additionally, he has held positions as a visiting research faculty at, at Princeton University and University of Maryland. He has received many awards and honors, of which some distinguished ones are Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award in 1995, National Award in Atmospheric Science and Technology in 2024 by the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Lifetime Achievement Award in the year 2018 in Science and Technology by Government of Assam. Then, Vastrik National Industrial Research Award in Environmental Science and Engineering, Harihom Ashram Vikram Sarabhai Award in 1994, Kamal Kumari National Award in Science and Technology 2008, K.R. Ramanathan Prize uh, 2008 by Indian National Science Academy. He is a fellow of uh, uh, many Indian and World Academy of Sciences and has published more than 200 research publications in high impact journals including three papers in nature. 
So it is a privilege uh, hearing to him on this platform. I invite you to the Oh, thank you very much for the uh, kind introduction. And uh, it is indeed a, a great pleasure and privilege uh, to be part of uh, uh, this auspicious uh, occasion of 66 accomplishment year of CSMD. And I want to thank uh, the director, Dr. Rebecca, for inviting me to be part of this uh, occasion. And indeed, I, 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 I'm sure that you have a lot to celebrate on this occasion. And, and, uh, and I'm hoping that in coming years, uh, as uh, 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 you mentioned, that you can be and really give a contribution to the national, uh, national um, uh, sustainability. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, basically, I'm a climate scientist and uh, I'm very concerned that about the, uh, the state of the environment as a result of human activities. Uh, and uh, these similar activities have resulted in the climate change crisis, and this crisis has, has, uh, is a result of our environment has changed. And the climate, the environment, and the sustainable development are all very inter interlinked. And this interlinking is, is, is something that we must understand. And, and uh, so, what I am concerned is that. Uh, to save the environment, that is why I'm taking up this, uh, uh, this topic today. In, in the next 20 minutes, I would like to just talk to you about the, uh, how serious is this problem and what we are, uh, what we need to do, but what we are not doing. Uh, and, uh, and that uh, extent, I believe that maybe CSI really can make a big contribution nationally and internationally to this problem. Uh, I know that uh, you are already doing certain things about, uh, about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the you know, energy. I see that I, I, I took a uh, walk in the morning and I saw you have a department of climate change and uh, green materials. I also have seen your brochure and that uh, you you have you are working on carbon capture. These are some of the very important things to control uh, the, uh, the climate change, climate change problem. Uh, but uh, what we are seeing is that uh, the action, not only regionally or locally uh, in India, in any area and anywhere else in the world, is very inadequate to to to, be, to, be, to, to solve this problem. And the, and the problem has become so bad that unless we do something drastically in a very short time, we will push the environment and the climate to a point where there will be no point of return. In other words, that is the kind of critical sort of tipping point. And the tipping point is almost reached yesterday. And therefore, we need to do uh, something that is drastic. And what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is tell you that what we need to do and what we are not doing. And in this context, what we are doing is very critical right now. So, what I think is we can do and make bigger already. Already, already, uh, already well equipped with the knowledge of the environment, the technology that is required, and, uh, and, and that is already there. Uh, what you need, like Dr. Bhatia mentioned, two little things big. And those thinking big 
to contribute not only to the local problem, but how this local problem can actually be contributed to the global issue of controlling the climate change and saving the environment. So with that, I will just try to tell you uh, what, is the, uh, what is the basic problem that we are dealing with and, uh, and what we need to do. So uh, uh, basically, as you know, the, uh, this is, this is the sustainable development is a buzzword, as Dr. Wade just mentioned. We have been talking about it for the last year. Uh, and last year, uh, uh, I mean, several decades, everybody is talking about it, but there might not be enough to uh, for that. Why do we need to talk about sustainable development? Because the development in the last 100 years has created uh, this climate change problem. And so we have recognized that that development, is not, development model is not a uh, not direct model, but we have to change. We have to change it to make it sustainable. Now, but what we are not doing, whatever is required to do that. But we have a responsibility. And unless you do this, we have a responsibility for the next generation and the generation uh, beyond that. Because we are pushing them to the brink of disasters uh, for none of their own fault. And this is because my generation before me and generation in my generation has not been able to take the, uh, enough action to control the climate. As a result, we are pushing the climate to the brink and the disasters that are going to be associated with them will uh, will will we will have to uh, uh, increase the generation has to be it. For none of the fault, so we have not only a moral responsibility but also a legal responsibility. In fact, I was very really interested to see this morning's newspaper. Sister says as a as a Norwegian businessman saying that the society, the Christian generation, has uh, is uh, is is uh, <clears throat> they have the right. Uh, to be protected against the adverse effects of the climate. And the state has to create policies so that they are protected. And this, uh, the state policies are, of course, uh, we, our institutions, have to contribute to those, uh, those protection of the, is, uh, uh, of the people of the Christian generation from the adverse effects of the climate. So this is, I think, is a problem is recognized, but we are not doing, not doing enough of it. And so we, at this point, I think even in the next 10 years, if we cannot cannot really do something uh, uh, drastically or in some sort of disruptive solutions, uh, then I think there will be no possibility of coming back. And the, the, the climate will then warm, uh, the very warm hothouse climate, and the, 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 the almost human sustainability will be impossible. So, so with that, I just like to tell you what the problem is and why this problem is and how we probably have landed up in this. So the first time this problem was recognized, I mean, this problem was recognized many years, almost 400 years ago, but it was not so well brought out. This is a paper where in 1998, uh, this scientist Michael Mann uh, 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 published this paper in Nature, where they reconstructed the, uh, the global temperature over 2000 years, and, <clears throat> and this is the global temperature uh, up to the up to present times. So and this looks like a hockey stick, and so this has been known as a hockey stick climate. It has become very famous. But it also showed that there is a very large, very fast increase in the last 100, 150 years, 200 years. And this happens to be the industrial revolution. So and this is why we call this a climate change, because the change in the climate, the temperature is unprecedented uh, and much larger than the competitive natural variability. If you see the variability of temperature in this is of the order of like 1.1.2 degrees uh, 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 Celsius from year to year over a long period of time. But suddenly in 2000 years, the variation is like 0.1.2 degrees. But, uh, but suddenly in 100 years, the change has gone to 1.4 degrees. So this is a very large change in the short time, right? unprecedented in the last three, and three million years. So that is why we call the climate change. And the linkage with the industrial revolution is very, very, very sort of telltale. And that is why many people objected to this at that point of time. And people in fact went and accused the Michael Mann about manipulating data and making it, uh, uh, making it clean. So all this went on for a long 
time. And in fact, he went to court for the permission. And actually, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, scientific bodies examining the veracity of the data and found that everything is is quite correct. And finally, he has been awarded the permission of more than a million dollars. Last about three weeks ago, a uh, uh, court has uh, awarded him. So in other words. The problem of the science, this problem of climate change problem is very real, and it is it is scientifically uh, 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 robust. Uh, to understand the problem, we have to understand that the art is very uh, uh, our art is very unique in the universe. It is mean temperature such that it can it can it can uh, the water can remain in the uh, all three states. This is called the near the thermal point of water. So this is very very critical for life to exist and flourish. And this has evolved by last 3.6 billion years. And because art and environment continuously interact and change, over 3.6 billion years, a lot of changes in the environment and climate, but it was never very conducive for life. And only in recent 2 million years, it started becoming only. For 3 million years, the, life, uh, the, the temperature has remained stable around 14 degrees Celsius. And it has been fluctuating from cold ice ages and the warm periods, but it has never declined or increased steadily. And that has happened only when the earth pulls a particular temperature. And so, uh, and that, but the humans have started changing the, the, the constituents of the atmosphere only for about 10,000 years or 12,000 years. And then from that time, suddenly only this very short time, compared to 4.6 billion years. The human activity has drastically changed that equilibrium. And that is where the problem is. And I tell you how much it has changed. And these are actually uh, are setting up the next uh, six uh, uh, <clears throat> mass extinction event. Uh, so you look at this environment and climate are very much, very much connected. Um, so the Earth's of course, environment consists of atmosphere, cryosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. The climate is a result of radiation balance uh, 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 over this uh, atmosphere uh, system. So the solar radiation comes in and it gets warmed up. There's some radiation from the earth and tries to emit and, and lose it. And then it gets trapped within the atmosphere. So this balance essentially determines our temperature. So in this balance, all this environment contributes. So the environment changes, this heat balance changes. The heat balance changes means the temperature changes. So that is how environment and, and, and the and the and the, uh, uh, the the climate interact, and that is why. And naturally, there is a, there is changes taking place. But in the natural changes, in humans, some part of this system, human modifies significantly. There is heat balance in chain, and that is going to create us the problem. That is what is the climate change. Uh, <clears throat> See, the natural balance between the environment is, uh, and the climate is in the for millions of years. This is a very interesting example of last one million years, where the temperature variations uh, here and uh, uh, here, and the carbon dioxide concentrations and the methane concentration are shown, which have been derived from uh, uh, Antarctic ice cores. So we went and drilled ice cores of Antarctica after about four, four kilometers, and from here by dating and finding out the uh, air bubbles, the concentrations were calculated and temperatures were uh, 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 estimated by using stable isotopes and so on. So we know that these happen, and these fluctuations of temperatures are associated with what is known as the ice ages. These are cold periods and ice ages. The warm periods are these interglacials, and we are now on an interglacial year. This is one of the interglaciers that we are st staying, but our temperature is somehow right now here, which is larger than almost all the other interglaciers. And this interglacial glacier extends for 100,000 years, fluctuation in about 100,000 years. These oscillations have been going on. And during these oscillations, the uh, carbon dioxide, whenever it is warm, the carbon dioxide is higher. Whenever it is cold, carbon dioxide is lower. And these high and low carbon dioxide, the same is with methane. It continues, it goes very closely with the temperature fluctuation. So, naturally, there is an interaction between carbon dioxide, methane, and temperature. This is going on. This, is, this has been an equilibrium. And you see, interestingly, that even in the warmest period, the, uh, the, uh, this was 
carbon dioxide is no more than 280 parts per million. But today, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is more than 20 parts per million. That's about more than 50 percent more. And that is the change that we are making. And that's a big change. Because within one million years, may have never it happened. And that happened because of only 10,000 years of human activity. And that is a big change. So, it is, it is because of this. Now, carbon dioxide today is about 420 parts per, uh, parts per million, and the, 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 the methane is about 2000 parts per billion. But if you see methane, uh, uh, methane used to be like between 400 parts per billion and 700 parts per billion. Today, we have increased three times maximum of what happened in the first one million years. So, that is also very, very big change. So these are the big changes that we are making. And these changes are essentially associated with, it came from the human activities. How is it? It is from this data, from the Michael Mann's uh, 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 hockey stick. This is also a hockey stick uh, 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 in terms of carbon dioxide, as well as our, uh, our fossil, fuel, fossil fuel consumption emissions and, and, uh, and gross domestic product. So the positive emissions are very much related to the, uh, the, the model of development. If you take the gross uh, domestic product, uh, today uh, the gross domestic product is more than 100 billion, uh, but this did not happen. If you see here, so for example, last 2,000 years, the carbon uh, uh, dioxide uh, uh, level was around 200 parts per billion, a uh, million. And then during this little ice age, it did little bit that is natural. Uh, so this was an equilibrium with all that fluctuation. The population was also very low, about 27 million, million people in that time. Then it became about 1 billion only about 1,000 years, years ago. And then it is two, uh, 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 not, not 1 billion, but, uh, uh, but about half a billion then became. In 200 years now, this has raised from half a billion to 8 billion. The population also has increased exponentially. So the exponential increase in population, of course, this is due to science and technology development, better health care, etc., etc. Uh, and <clears throat> so, because of the growing population, we are over exploiting the environment, over exploiting, we are cutting more trees, more uh, more vegetation. Also, we are exploiting the under um, under surface resources like the coal, natural gases, and so on. And all that is adding more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Because the developmental model requires a lot of energy, that energy is the cheapest source of energy it comes from the fossil fuel, and that is where how we have extracted, and that is what is adding more and more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So that is why uh, this, uh, the association of this uh, the problem is associated with this model of our development. And that is that is important to recognize because we need to change that. Uh, uh, so. In this context, uh, to see the problem and how to solve it, we need to really look at how people are contributed. So, the, so therefore, this is one of the biggest uh, common but differentiated responsibility. In other words, the, 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 the developed country is contributed much more to this problem than uh, the developing countries because they have been doing this for more than 100 years, whereas the developed countries have started from about 1950 onwards, uh, and so their contribution is much greater. But carbon dioxide is just that once you add it, it stays there. The atmosphere for 200, 300 years, and, so, and that keeps on digging the atmosphere. So, that is the legacy issue or historical contribution is affecting all of us. Because carbon dioxide is also in our gas, so it distributes all of the oil leaves over the whole globe, and it affects the globe. Even if America and North, North America and Europe produce that, it is affecting all of us. And still, they are not reducing their emission. This is a big problem. We have all recognized that. See, look at this. Uh, this is China's contribution. So, in 2000, uh, 1900, we emitted about, about two gigatons of uh, uh, emission carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Out of these two gigatons, about one gigaton stays in the atmosphere, and one gigaton is, uh, is, is half of it is absorbed by different uh, things. I'll show you that in a minute. And then, like that, just goes on building up, building up, building up. So, uh, uh, and now, now these countries like China is putting a lot of it in the atmosphere. Now, you look at America. 
university did starting much in the 1900s, uh, uh, 1900s they started doing it and they have already contributed quite a lot in 1950 and now also they are contributing. European Union, so these two are the biggest contributors historically. Uh, and India, it of course started contributing, but the contribution has now increased. Now India has become a bit hard to contribute the uh, emission, emission in the world. But uh, still, our, our total cumulative contributions are still much less than from all the others. But still, we need to be concerned about it. So, so today, what happens is that so this way we are building up this population, and, and so today we are attending about almost 40 gigatons every year. The 40 gigatons happens about 20 gigatons have remaining in the atmosphere. Like that, if you see from year to year, uh, every year half of it becomes uh, about 9 gigatons per year about, uh, by, uh, by about uh, our 150 years we are putting up. And that means almost 900 gigaton uh, 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 more carbon dioxide we are putting in the atmosphere. And originally, before that, the today total, the total amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is about 2,500 gigatons. Out of 2,500 gigatons, about 1,000 gigatons has been put by humans. Think about that. That is the problem. And now we have to, uh, to control the system, we have to take a large part of it out. How do we do that? That is our new problem. Carbon capture, you are doing, but you are doing in a small scale. You cannot take out much, you cannot upscale it. It's very difficult to upscale it because carbon capture concentration in the atmosphere are small, so we need big system, bigger cost, smaller output. And so this is a big problem. How do we solve it? So this is where new innovations are required, new ideas. How to make it cheaper and, and larger output. So these are issues that we need to address. And have to, in fact, recently there is some study that says, so instead of, instead of atmospheric carbon dioxide, if you try to do it with ocean carbon, extract ocean carbon, it will be much better because it is concentration is much higher and efficiency is also 30 percent large. So we have here the limits and I so and if I permit the end, I also a figure. So uh, they have they have not tried that that is much lesser cost also. So about to, to extract the atmospheric carbon dioxide, uh, it takes about thousand dollars per ton. So that is six hundred dollars to thousand dollars per ton. That's quite expensive if you're in a larger scale, if you are scale. On the other hand, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the ocean apparently it costs about hundred dollars uh, uh, per ton. So 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 this is a little bit cheaper. So now I think there's something new ideas are coming like that. So we have to find something very new, basically uh, new ideas uh, to do that. So we have to understand this why this problem has become because it has become because of this carbon balance. And as I said, uh, as I said, we have anything. Everything about uh, about nine gigatons every year, and we have a carbon cycle, uh, a simple diagram, which so that uh, the, 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 uh, the, the industries and the vehicles and all are contributing about uh, putting nine gigatons in the atmosphere. Out of that, about half of that uh, four gigatons remain in the atmosphere, and this is because of two, but the, the atmosphere, the biosphere, and the land absorbs a lot. Also, I mean, some similar to the ocean absorbs a lot, but also I mean, some. So, if you take all this balance, about 50% still remains in the atmosphere. That is our problem. So, we have to understand to see how to, how to improve this. We have to understand how we can make these systems more efficient in absorbing, that is one way of doing it. Or, uh, uh, I have to come up with ideas like that. So, well, the problem is very serious because in the recent years, in the in fact, the last 200 years, only in the recent years, the acceleration of the global mean temperature has become more rapid. So, in fact, the last 30 years, it is quite fast. And that is what is very worrisome because at this rate, even the estimations by the global models are more conservative. In fact, by the end of the century, I think we will exceed more than 3 degrees rather than 2.7 degrees. And that is what. And that is that is so. And so by two degrees, I think we will exceed not only by 2050, but in by 2035, I think by the, we will 
2014 will uh, exceed the 2 degree. And once you exceed 2 degree, we will be deviating the system. And, why? In that, and so let me explain that. Why? People have been talking about this uh, 1.5 degrees. If you can live at 1.5 degree, because if you go to beyond 1.5 degree, it is going to uh, keep the climate to a disastrous point, a tipping point. We'll exceed the tipping point. Why is that? This you can see from this history of temperature of the uh, uh, of the of the most uh, earth over the last uh, 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 last 500 million years. So, so this is the, uh, the uh, uh, reconstruction of uh, temperature. What is important is that around 303 million years, that is when our temperature became what it is now, the industrial conditions. Because earth used to cool to that point. Once it cools, then these feedbacks they produce this, uh, this ices and the oscillations and uh, well, uh, uh, possible because these oscillations are created by deviations of solar radiation and those small deviations can make those feedbacks work only if the mean temperature is below a certain point. And that is when it started happening. Now, it is so, it is so if we go beyond this, so let me show you. Uh -huh. So, so uh, uh, so if I if today today we are yeah yeah uh, 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 yes I'm with yeah so if we go beyond and that is when it will not be possible to sustain this feedback and retain this bring it down the full of temperature and therefore it will be, it will be possible it will then take the what we call runaway greenhouse effect and that runaway greenhouse effect will then warm the like in the past and get the atmosphere warm maybe like 65 million years ago, like eight degrees above the above, above the industrial north. So this is the scenario and this is very likely to happen and we need to worry about that. And this is all happening because of this energy consumption and at this point of my time we are having the 80% uh, uh, of the global energy comes from fossil fuel. Only 20% is green energy. And that is our big problem. How can we make 100% green energy within 10 years? I think uh, unless you can do that, then you have to cut down energy consumption. Without that, sustainability is not possible. So global energy consumption. Cutting down global energy consumption is going to be objected by everybody in the States because they say that we have to do it. Uh, but I think this is a compromise we have to do. Either we make green energy 100% very fast, or we cut down uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, drastically energy consumption. So what we need to do, if we keep the temperature at, uh, at, at 1.8 or, 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 or 2 degrees, we need to cut down about 20 to 25 gigatons uh, and, uh, the emission has, has to be cut down. That is the deficient. So the modeling studies indicated that if we cut down only by more than 23 gigatons per year for the next several years, then we may be able to contain, contain this. But if not, it will go, this level, uh, uh, business as usual, usual, if we do, it will lead to about 3 degrees above by the end of the century. That is where our big problem is. But how do we achieve this? Nobody is cutting down enough. We are not able to generate the enough green energy. Uh, and we are doing, everybody is doing it. Little, but green innovation can't be so small, I think, globally. Uh, and because, uh, and that is why it is, we are not progressing at the pace at the, at the, at the, at the, that is required. And because we are doing something opposite, because many countries are in, are in supporting this uh, 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 continuation of, instead of putting more taxes on the uh, fossil fuel consumption uh, by, they are putting subsidies in it. Like in the United States, they are subsidizing uh, fossil fuel for sale by 6 billion, 600 billion a year. 600 billion. If I put that fund into green innovation, I think we will solve the problem in 10 years. Instead of doing that, we are and because that is what they make more profit, because it is cheaper, they make the companies make more profit, and companies determine policies. So let us say the big tax. So that is what is the problem. So this is democracy is what we are not not putting enough. But in addition to that, we are doing the energy politics. Uh, 
around the globe. And I think that is what is going to be is, is, is another problem. Particularly, we are entering wars here and here and everywhere because defense industry can make more money. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, that is really is still unnecessary. What I'm saying is that to, for sustainability, you have to stop unnecessary uh, use of energy. And that has to come from the people themselves. And that is different spending for wise. I think it's unnecessary. Why can't we stop it? And that is not only using all that much money and burning it. Then you are going to raise and devastate uh, all the cities and countries. And then go and rebuild them using again, again fossil fuel energy. This is so much of more carbon dioxide is going to the atmosphere and create more disasters uh, uh, for the climate and the environment. So I think this is uh, completely unsustainable. So what can you do? What can you do is you have to change the development model. But this is almost an impossible task because something called the deep growth model is being talked about, and there is a lot of a lot of stock and discussion going on. But the governments are not willing to take and uh, take an action on this because the developing countries have to right can say that we want to we, we need our development because we have not completed as much and we need the future. But uh, 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 but. The developed countries are not doing what they need to do, and who will make them? The United Nations cannot force the US to, the US to uh, do what they need to do. So, therefore, we have a very big problem. And this is our, but we will just need that. I think morally, also, we will we ourselves need to do as much as we can. Uh, so, this is a big problem. Therefore, at the end of the day, since I have, uh, uh, I, have uh, I think, over some my time. Let me conclude by saying that we need to do something very disruptive, but that is not happening. And my, my, my what I can see is it's, it's, it's almost impossible unless uh, uh, unless there is some kind of a social uh, awareness that we need to do this, and we can change policies on a global level. Uh, global level. Uh, uh, there is some global social movement that is coming out of the park, not being so much effective so far. So this essentially is, is essentially due to our greed. I think this GDP growth model is a sort of greed-based model because only only the, the, the few people gain from this and uh, inequity increases and these high uh, high net individuals uh, actually determine the policies uh, and therefore there is uh, there is uh, there is a problem of uh, so, uh, 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 I think it's almost impossible to break that nexus. So how do we do that? Uh, we need probably a, probably a, a revolution uh, uh, and and uh, and to achieve this, but uh, that probably will take some time. Meanwhile, what we need to do, we can do is to try our best to to increase green innovations and 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 see how we can upscale uh, the carbon capture. Mm -hmm. And I think that with that, I stop and thank you. Yeah, is there a question of Thank you, sir, for such an informative talk, which has helped us gain deep insights into the issue of climate change, its contributing factors, and possible approaches to control the same in a sustainable manner. Thank you for that. So, uh, taking the session forward, uh, I would like to invite our chief guest now, Dr. Upendra Kumar Singh, for his talk. Before he starts his talk, I would like to give a brief uh, introduction about him. Uh, Dr. Singh did his post-graduation in computer science from Devi Ahilya Vishwavidyalaya Indore and obtained his doctorate from University of Hyderabad on soft computing. Starting his career in Shipbuilding Center, Vishakhapatnam, in October 1989, he moved to NCL in 1992, where he worked for system simulation and embedded software development of onboard computer of underwater vehicles. During his 34 years of service, uh, he has closely worked with Indian Industries, Academia, and foreign firms for realization of advanced vehicle systems 
for the services. As a director of DBL, he was engaged in meeting critical requirements of Indian armed forces and steered the development of many life support systems such as protective equipment and integrated life saving systems for NCA aircraft stages, underwater submarine escape systems, individual underwater breathing apparatus, and much more. Uh, he is currently working uh, as a Director General Life Sciences at DRDO Ministry of Defence Government of India. And uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Singh spearheaded the team involved in the development of medical oxygen plants, oxygen systems and critical care ventilators to make our country self-reliant to tackle oxygen-related medical emergencies in future. He significantly contributed uh, to making Admanirbhar Bharat in medical oxygen and critical care ventilation in the medical equipment field. A propagator of self-reliance, he success successfully spearheaded transfer of technologies to many industries. He has published many papers in national and international journals and is a recipient of DRDO Award for Pathbreaking Research, Outstanding Technology Development and Laboratory Scientist of the Year Award. He is a life member of the Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers, Computer Society of India, and Aeronautical Society of India. So, uh, with this introduction, I request you, sir, to give me your talk. So, very good morning and uh, thanks a lot to uh, Professor Vedda who has invited on this auspicious occasion of your 66th Foundation Day. In fact, Foundation Day is always auspicious and uh, it also gives us perhaps occasion to celebrate what we have achieved and set the new direction he has already said. I will take it further. I'll be more talking about the top level government views of as he was talking about 2047. What are the technologies, goals which we have to set, what to achieve, and perhaps what are the challenges on, the, on these particular pathways when we want to achieve those goals. And certainly then it also gives us a lot of opportunities so that by overcoming those problems and challenges, we'll be able to do our work. And uh, maybe uh, I'll be talking globally about all the technologies, but yes, concentration of seven to eight slides are there for the environment. But personally, I also think that the environment should be protected. So, uh, uh, Dr. Goswami, in fact, had talked about the uh, GDPs and other things. So I will start from there. Uh, nothing against the GDP, but yes, the model can be changed. It can be a mix of many other models. And this diagram shows that uh, before the mother earth, we are still children. Let us remain small and, and try to save uh, this environment. You people are doing fantastic job. We, in fact, I had morning session with Dr. Uh, Vandya. And uh, continue to work. Climate change is one of the most important problems before the world, and how to solve, how to think big. Uh, as he was rightly telling, in fact, uh, uh, in, in DRDO also, all the labs have been told, not worry about the amount of money you want, amount of resources you want. You first formulate a program or project by which you can take flagship project and say that, this project will help the institution, help the country, help the society in a big way, and it will be evaluated in all those things. I hope this point is taken very seriously by combining our efforts, not only within the institution. I have seen that uh, being scientists, uh, we are tending to work among, within ourselves, within our own, either in a, within core group or within ourselves, and not talk to the people in and around with the similar background or the people who are on the similar problems, not even the same institute. Nagpur is not a very small institute, but I hope that there is 
Institute from DRDO, I don't know how many of you have visited. Please visit, you are invited. And see what are things which are happening there. Let us combine our strength and make it seem that we achieve big. Yes, Dr. Abdul Kalam said once, seeing a small dream also is a big thing. I am there. Unless we see big, we cannot do big things. So with this, I will see that uh, where do I, I take it from here? So, yes, uh, presently we are the uh, uh, fifth uh, largest economy in terms of GDP uh, with 3.4 to 3.7 trillion and aiming for 30 trillion. It is not possible unless all of the scientific community and all of Indian citizens can work towards that. So, we are going from a smaller to big per capita income, which is standing 2,000. $400, it is supposed to grow up to 18000 In fact, it was at some point of time in the golden era of human, uh, in the golden era of India, we had 32% of the global economy. Today we are only 3.7%. This is the world uh, economy where, where the whole 100, up to $100 uh, trillion dollars of economy which comes from Majority of the countries, US is leading with the 26.9, then China 19.4, and uh, I think uh, after that it is uh, Japan and UK, and then India comes. Now the trouble here is there is a black economy of shadow economy, which is no, no less than this, we could say. So if you club both the economy, it will be larger than, so we will all that we are there at the third position. But then, slowly, those by digitalization trying to bring out, I remember one personal incident. Most of my time I have devoted in South India, in Isakapetra, in Bangalore, and Hyderabad, 32 years. And I have never been asked by any of the vendors that, okay, we want this type of purchase or this type of purchase. So when I landed up two and a half years to three years back in Delhi, and I wanted to change my sofa, so I went to the shopkeeper and then uh, I, I said, yes, this looks to be good. I, I went along with my wife and then he said, what do you want? You want with the, with the GST or without GST? So with GST, it will come like this, without GST. So first time I saw him after my 32 years of service. Uh, so yes, there is a black one. So but naturally I said that I want with the GST. At least I, I find that I will not say that everyone, but okay, most of the South of India, there is no divide here also, people may be there. But I think that is where we have to start putting our say that even though it is, we are going on the losses, we must uh, must be aligned with the policies of the government and regulations as, as your director was telling me. And uh, basically, uh, yes, as per SNP Global, we are going to be third largest economy by 2030, and as per many estimates, we are uh, going to be one of the top economy by 2047. And so that lot of efforts had to be done. And, and there is a secretary, there is a group of secretaries which is formed by the government of India, which is going to set goals for every institution. And then, but they shouldn't, all the details had to be given from the scientists in from the lab, how we are going to achieve those goals. And that is how we are going to come up. Let me tell you that it is possible, and then I'll, I'll be giving some of the evidences, particularly like uh, manufacturing of mobiles in India. Uh, Ten years back, it was nowhere, and today we are second. So yes, there was 400% of increase in mobile manufacturing in the last 10 years. It is possible to go beyond this 7% or 8% of GDP, whatever is being shown. So some of, the, some of the sectors will be doing exceedingly well, whereas others may not be doing well. So we have to see that those laggards, where it is not moving, we have to push it further. And this is not possible without changes structurally in the institution. Within uh, Dr. Verdea was talking about I think something regrouping, I don't know what has happened in Hiddin. Yes. Uh, over the DRU also there is a review committee which has been set up and then there is a lot of push and pull. They say that life sciences doesn't do anything, so remove them. In fact, during COVID time, these nine labs of 
life sciences work day and night. More lockdown create. 2000 crore rupees from the PMO was uh, not PMO. Uh, 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 this was available to the trust and oxygen plant, as the Madam has been out, oxygen plant or ventilator, they are all made in three months, not only made in small numbers, huge quantities. Something which was supposed to be made one in three months, we made uh, 1000 in three months, right? So, a lot of efforts are done. And uh, many institutions like you must also have contributed. We had to think something big. <laughs> So, yes, there are a lot of uh, regional disparities in the country. There is a east portion which is relatively never taken care of. Even the northeast is, is lagging behind. I think a lot of efforts are there. I can see because you have three of my laboratories are there in the deep high Himalayas in, in Assam, Rehan, and even in Nepal and Pithara and all in Earlier, the roads which we are taking three days to reach, I am able to reach in 13 hours. So the country is moving. We had to re engineering the processes and developing excellence in many, many of areas, re calibrating our international engagement, and creating of human capital, including, I uh, was very, very happy that a lot of children, they were waiting for laboratories. You have to inspire, you have to motivate them so that they join you today as your workforce. Then we have to have a lot of efforts to make, to make that we are having industry top, global industries that is 10, uh, 10 out of funding should be there from India. Similarly, 10 out of funding institution, educational, higher education institution should be there from us. And of course, the literature, the literary day, it is presently hovering around 77%. We have to go to 100%. And a lot of gap between the rural and urban, urban income, where most of the people who have migrated from the rural area to the urban areas, because cash is available there, even though they may be uh, staying in a very depleted state, but then they are away from their close relatives and friends. I remember the student in my village and People to come from Delhi, they are coming in the soup boot and all those with the ties. Whereas, what job actually they are doing in the city is, of course, and not be asked like that they are telling truthfully. But then you have to make it sure that the income in the villages are also as much or at least meeting their basic requirement if you want to grow further. So, uh, let me tell you, there are only two solutions to escape. The environmental conditions which are happening in the, in the world. One thing that Dr. Goswami has brought out that we have to make it sure that the environmental changes are arrested. Or then we also tell you there is another solution. How costly it is, I don't know. Moving out from this planet. Is it, no? Because already we have aspired so much. If we move from one city to another city, or we, we go from uh, I don't know, one group to another group is the boss is not very palatable, right? So, uh, let me tell you, there is an incident in uh, 1994. There was a, 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 a comment which failed on, on uh, um, basically um, one of the pl planets, right, Jupiter, I think, yes. And uh, finally, the speed, the speed of that particular it was 2,16,000 kilometers per hour. Though the usual temperature was minus 150 degrees, the temperature rose up to 24,000 degrees. And quickly the flame rose up to 3,000 kilometers. You can imagine, this may happen once in a while, but if it happens on the Earth, we are all born in a fraction of seconds, right? So a lot of effort is being done particularly by Elon Musk. He wants to establish a colony on Mars. A lot of efforts are going and he's very serious, let me tell you. I'm, I'm a very close follower. And this is the actual uh, photograph uh, of, of this particular uh, comet, which was about to fall, which was well predicted. And it was seen by many of the scientists who were there. And so this is one of the things which is uh, virtually made the 
and see that you are you are going to be there. Though the environment as the Earth has evolved over millions of years and given such a nice environment, will not be there. Uh, but then perhaps something else also can be done. So this is another myth. And uh, in fact, why I have written uh, that the entire Earth is about the point and the place of our own habitation. The minute corner of it, because many times, because of the egos and anger and because of various factors, we are never ready to talk to our own close colleagues, should be about it. Now, it's not that there are no challenges, there are a lot of challenges. Still, I think 50 50 ladies community still is not sitting even in the main environment, right? Which is very soft, not very harsh environment. So, yes, there is a lot of disparities. Still, women power are not as much employed, not as much educated. Still, the study news was there that uh, from Andhra, I think the father killed the baby child because he was a baby child. Girl child. Uh, I think this kind of disparities is not acceptable. Uh, similarly, uh, education and human empowerment is needed. At least half of the population is sitting in the house and eating. Ideally, I think that is that is uh, that will not uh, allow us to move. Of course, environment protection. I will be taking a lot of details later on. Employment opportunities for the youngsters, and uh, yes, a lot of protest is there all over the world, not only in India. Farmer uh, protests. Sustainable development and goals, yes, of course, it goes without saying, and this is the staircase where we must run and make finally a shining India where we are able to achieve much more larger growth. There should be no corruption. So, are we able to fight in the corruption is more in the hands of the citizen rather than the people who are demanding that, unless you are ready to take the pain, ready to bear the things. It will keep on happening. So, yeah. So uh, coming back to the technology, there are various many technologies, right? But I have, I have just grouped it into uh, eight of them. And uh, agriculture technology, aerospace, biotech, health, medical devices, communication, IT, information technology, and electronics, chemical technology. I think your director is. Chemical technology expert, ocean technology. Let me tell you, you were talking about the ocean technology. Maybe our future food will be coming from the seaweeds. We may have to uh, sequester all the carbon dioxide into, into the ocean. A lot of research is going on. So that can be another area where you can do the research. Of course, renewable and green energy where India is fairly doing very good. Weather surveillance and management, and of course, Making weather itself as the weapon of mass destruction. Mass destruction. So I will be talking in very brief. So in very brief, I will be talking about. I will not be going into the details. Perhaps by the time I will make out one or two sentences, you can you can read. So agricultural incomes have not kept, and neither the agricultural crop yields have taken has has. Basically, coped up with whatever the kind of disparities which has happened in the other environment. And uh, of course, the solution doesn't lie that you increase the cost of the food, then of course, the will be dying because of the food. The solution is the byproducts or diversification. <laughs> and today, a lot of technology has been developed where every rest is getting converted into ethanol, bitumen, and aviation fuel. And, uh, and your MP from here is quite popular. Our Lord Minister, Transport Minister, uh, Dr. Gadkari. And Gadkari, he is very I hope that this catches up with the, with the farmers and they become much more richer and it becomes possible for them to live in the villages also. And similarly, fragrance and flavor crops, they can diversify. Pulses and edible oils, so there is a goal which is said that by 2030, both pulses and edible oils, we should not import from the other country. And similarly, there are all other things, in fact, for you also, that how the land itself has to be made so that uh, those, those lands which are degraded, how to restore them, 
and regenerate the water bodies. All these things should be part of this. And in fact, two giga, uh, Google, giga uh, ethanol, uh, ethanol uh, capacity in that two giga liters ethanol plant has been set up in the Panipat, and similar things have been set up at other places. Cold chain management has to be done, and then I hope that you are knowing there is one health mission in India where, by those one health mission, it means that it is not the health of the individual, but the health of the animals, health of the plant, health of the planet, health of the ecosystem, everything has to be managed. As one system, only then you'll be able to find out that there are no disparities between one to other, and one will not be the other. Similar, similarly, aeronautics and space may not be part of your thing, but yes, every day you must also be flying at least once in a while. India though makes the DRU because of the DRU will make the fighter aircraft, but we have got no civilian aircraft. Civilian aircraft will be made by NAL, uh, they in Bangalore, and the first flight for the 19 seater will happen in 2024 25. And similarly, India is having the goal of making 40 to 90 seater, and then again go beyond that, up to 300 seater. seater. We are also having, uh, you are having to to my uh, ISO, uh, you are the advisor, and I am also in that board presenting. Uh, they are having the Gaganyaan mission for which we are supporting all life support systems for the crews which will be flying. And similarly, they are also going to set up Bharati <coughs> Andrik station by 2035 to 40. Then there is a moon mission, human moon mission by 2040. And so these are the goals being set for, uh, for the bigger institution, particularly in this particular area. Aerospace, aeronautics, and space. Uh, similarly, there are other areas uh, which are there with the DRDO. In fact, where they should be able to monitor the uh, having the state, having the space uh, uh, monitoring and space basically situation awareness, which we are already there. I cannot talk much about that. Uh, but yes, big programs are going on more than more than five thousand programs of projects. Similarly, biotech and health and medical devices. Today, in India is importing more, more than 40,000 crores of, of equipment every year. And let me tell you, next 5 to 10 years, I'm very much sure that with the PLI, uh, this is with the, with the uh, whatever is the uh, production based on the uh, production linked uh, uh, investment government is supporting, where most of the medical equipment, including MRI, you must have seen so many hospitals are having many medical devices all imported. MRI is being made in India, in fact, two of them have been made, one by Samir Mumbai and another one by another Paul in, uh, in Bangalore, and they are going to go. So, next five to ten years, you'll find that all our hospitals will be populated with our own devices and machines. Similarly, <coughs> A lot of people are losing their organs, particularly in the accident or because of various uh, birth problems and organ donation is not that everybody is able to commit. Even after death, we want to preserve or maybe we, want, we don't want to destroy. But then organ uh, donation should be, should be basically popularized. Uh, then similarly, we are having already genomic sequence for human beings as well as the, for plants. And a lot of organ, particularly external organ, uh, um, is, is getting synthesized. We also work on the cochlear implant where the person who is, hard, who is very hard hearing, uh, in fact, his middle ear is not working. You can make a device, presently it is getting imported. And particularly, my reason and the me is working for making the cochlear implant, which we already implanted on many people, which was partial success. And now we are knowing that what is the actual problem which we are going in particularly electronic part. Similarly, there will be precision medicines. You will be given what medicines which you need to do it. And a lot of, uh, a lot of research is to be done, particularly in the genomic uh, interventions and therapies, where let us suppose somebody is having a cancer, and it will be, in fact, you go to the Hyderabad airport, you'll find that two, three farms are sitting. They will say, give me 10,000 rupees, I will be able to tell you your genomic sequence. As well as, uh, as tell you that next 10 years, what are the diseases which you are going to have it. So, if these genomic sequence, uh, sequencing and interventions, regulations are 
made by India, perhaps it is possible to intercept your diseases well in advance and correct also. Similarly, in fact, the government uh, has got a lot of uh, attention on Ayush Ministry, uh, which is uh, Ayurvedic, Yoga, and uh, Homeopathy. All these things also, though, though they are allowed today under the regulation, this government is trying to tell to these ministries that they should bring out the evidences of curing the diseases through these means. And a lot of efforts are being done. Each one of them are being given the targets for doing these things. And of course, particularly in the DRDO side, we do CBRN is, is nothing but the um, chemical, biological radiation and nuclear radiation effects if it happens because of some clashes. Uh, our enemies then how to make drugs and antibodies, the very specific drugs and antibodies, being, uh, antidotes are being made and that is being done by, uh, by DRU labs. And we have already achieved more than 50% of the requirement. Similarly, India has the goal that we should become the uh, health provider for the world. Today itself, in fact, let me tell you, very proud because many times I have also gone to US. If you are having a small ailment, you will feel always that go back to India and get it done. In the hospital uh, environment, we are much better, much better than any other countries. Uh, many, many uh, facilities of Indian Indian sources are being implied by the people outside to have a medical tourism. This is the place where we are doing very, very good. In fact, India is also the house of biggest vaccination. Uh, drug development and, and drug production. So this is where we are already already uh, advanced uh, advanced than others, and we hope that others also will uh, will be picking up. Uh, we also, in fact, develop telemedicine for the armed forces, particularly for navy naval ships, which are going to the deep sea. In fact, uh, one junior doctor said about to go there, but then if big trouble happens, what is to be done? Whether the mission to be aborted or the person had to be picked up by aircraft, uh, aircraft and that aircraft means helicopter. Helicopter also has got a, uh, uh, got a range through which it can go. So we have developed long back telemedicines, which is still not very popular uh, in, in fact, but then it should be implied so that the delivery of the services for the medicines and the consultation is given uh, at the person wherever he wants, particularly in the house, particularly for old people. Uh, so a lot of technologies are moving particularly organ on chip and human itself, all the organs on chip. In fact, in DRDO also, since we are having department for physiology and, and nuclear uh, medicines, we are also intending to develop the models for the whole, whole human organs. Uh, so we started developing them. some of them, uh, presently trying to develop for the human guts and already cochlear implant it and it will become moving for the other organs. Similarly, <clears throat> access to personalized medicine should be possible because same medicine may not work for uh, one person. Most of you must be knowing that uh, these medicines also want to try during the phase two and phase three. It's not that it has cured everyone, but then it says that statistically if it is significant, then you allow this medicine. Similarly, in fact, there is an IT field where uh, India is doing a lot of uh, good thing. Uh, in IT, in fact, most of the most of the global companies in the IT field are being headed by Indians. So, so they may not be; they are Indian born. They are not the Indian citizen. Uh, but of course, they should also work for the country. Uh, the aim is yes, one of the Indian uh, companies should be should be counted in the global chain. Uh, and similarly, 20% of the global mobile equipment should be done by India. Presently, uh, it will be 17, 18%. But then, this was perhaps long back, this aim was made uh, few months back before the result uh, for the mobile production came. Similarly, uh, a lot of uh, software development happens, and particularly, more thing, let me tell you that any missile before firing, a lot of modern day is done, similarly, before. Satellite is launched, everything is there in the software and the model is developed. We also have, have to have a very nice, good model for the Earth. 
good model for the environment, good model for the uh, for the weather. I think this is the one area. I don't know which agency should take, but then people have to divide the work and make it. Maybe interinstitutional mechanism should be made where you should be able to develop a model and uh, predict that behavior of the uh, behavior of the uh, weather and the, and the climate. Uh, similarly, a lot of work is going on, particularly on AI and ML um, for the safety because a lot of death had happened on the on the road. In spite of uh, our transport minister working very hard, somewhere we are not able to arrest this number of deaths which are happening every time. And, and in fact, a lot of uh, brain injuries are happening. We hope that now there is a lot of efforts for digitization of the central state and the local government. I don't know whether you are digitized or not, when all your files move on the, in the digital form or not. But Indian governments warned that by 2047, we must have all these things done and recorded. Why there should be a fight between the two farmers was perhaps parents, their friends, so they did not fight when the next generation came, then they are fighting for a small strip of land between the two neighbors. If it is well recorded, this type form, it is easier. You have many times to find that things are not available uh, in, the, in the paper. Similarly, 5G subscription uh, subscription uh, also is supposed to increase from 159 million to 499 million. A lot of chemical technology. In fact, we have found that uh, I went to IIT Bulki and then uh, we were talking to one of the professors. He said that he could convert uh, basically um, plastic into protein. And then uh, from where the enzyme comes, and finally it was enzyme based. So it is very costly, right? So if, if I have to import an enzyme of one crore rupees for making a small thing, it is not effective. So the idea is we have to make, make it sure that we make enzymes here, and in large quantity, particularly the industrial enzymes, and uh, similarly production of uh, methanol and jet fuel should be done. Uh, we are also Having uh, basically one of my lab has got uh, one of the seeds which is only available with us in the India. We are having a village PCL in how to make the jet, uh, jet fuel out of this particular uh, plant. Now, uh, yes, a lot of work is uh, supposed to be done in the ocean uh, technology. Let me tell you that the, the wave population is increasing, which I will come in the next few slides. Uh, Whatever the, the production, crop production on the land, which is available with us, we may not be able to produce. We may have to shift our places in the ocean, both for food, even, even including the stream. So a lot of work presently is being done where submersibles are being sent up to six, uh, six kilometers. Where they are seeing that whether we can make our decisions. Even today, in the big IT firms, all their Processing elements are being put inside the house. Reasoning they need a lot of power. They consume a lot of power, a lot of heating happens, and they are being put. So we, we, we have to do a lot of such work. Similarly, as we were talking about, uh, the carbon dioxide based algae production can be done in large quantity. We have to model ocean, atmosphere, and solid earth. Self-reliance in, in all the offshore and also needs of the research, commerce, and security. Prediction of disaster. You know, I was talking about that the NDRF, which was formed, I think, in 2010 or sometime. When I was in this every year there was a cyclone, and you find that 5,000 to 10,000 people death will occur or destruction. Today, we go to the NDRF, we go to the good weather prediction. We are able to arrange those things, but yes, much more better things have to be done. Yes, so this next five slides I think belongs to area where, where, where you are there. Renewable and green technology. So I will give you what the evidence that again from not the area which I'm not very much familiar with your area. Yes, the Saturn V in 1962 was now by, by US and the cost was $18,000 per day. In 2020, Falcon heavy engine launcher by Elon Musk. 
was done when the cost has come down to $800. So this is the power of reusability. And let me tell you, still, the NASA, if they have to launch the same things, the similar capacity, they have to charge $2,000 per. So Elon Musk has made it so that their child of parents who ran away from the house, let us not look for the resources, manpower, this and that. No? There are a lot of the stories which can be done. And the aim for next five years is $20 per kg. So you can imagine that the reason he is capable and dreaming of sending human being to the Mars. Because he says that my transportation cost is going down. Similarly, these things will be known to you. I'm not going to uh, elaborate, elaborate. But let me tell you, today we are having all sorts of batteries, but battery which runs in Himalaya has a temperature less than minus 20 is still not available. Diesel, which many countries have developed at minus 40 degree, which can work at minus 40 here. Somewhere only at minus 20. So there is if the if the time has to be made on, then Parallelly, you have to one person to keep on running. So how much unnecessary consumptions and and the green gas effects are happening? So uh, how to minimize the carbon footprint at every step of human endeavor? In fact, we are all we have to take the responsibility, and all of us. A lot of uh, efforts by by the government of India has happened for increasing the solar power. In fact, the one of the agenda for the present manifesto is. So I think that is a good thing. And presently, 72 gigawatt power is getting generated. And this has happened 30 times in the last 10 years. And next five years, this number will double. 72. So I think a lot of efforts are being done by the government of India, at least on the solar power front. Now coming to the weather surveillance and uh, environment management. No. I, I still remember uh, my village was just uh, by, by the uh, at the full, full hills of, of, a, of a hill called Kamur Ki Pahari. And uh, you will find that every rainy season, five uh, cattle have run, uh, basically had been washed out, and two people have uh, been washed out because there was no mechanism. Today, these waters like this were put without asking even that how much do you want to drink? What to get? Today we are so casual about putting the water like this. Tomorrow it is not going to be So let us mind that there will be IoT devices for everybody. He should be able to say, yes, I need I need half half glass or one fourth or only one pinch of water. So he will not be having the luxury. I think your work is very important. So collaborative weather prediction and geotagging had to be done that the individual is alarmed. Uh, today fishers are being, fishermen are being alarmed. But then decide to go uh, to the smaller level also. Even now in Himalayas, the beautiful roads have been made, four lane roads. But you find that most of the time, every two kilometer at every turn, there is a landslide. And then you don't know which landslide will happen on, on the thing. So, yes, I think uh, sensitive uh, ecosystem, wherever, particularly Himalayas, if it is there, we have to have some gadgets. Some instrument which can predict, otherwise become suggestive. Similarly, you must have heard through the newspaper, a lot of soldiers are being uh, basically killed because of that avalanche. So, landslide like prediction, we can do it. Avalanche prediction, we can do it. No, a lot of heat is getting generated. Can you? No, you must have recently heard that uh, South Korea had developed artificial sun, China had developed uh, artificial sun. So, can you generate artificial heat sink where all these heating effects, you know, all your heat, you imagine that I've done something where all temperature goes down, not the carbon dioxide or the carbon food elements can come down. So, research elements can be can be mounted. And uh, IoT is smart, I've already told for not only energy monitoring, let me tell you in 2021 when we supplied the uh, oxygen plant, 2022. Every PM, PM only one thing out there. Anything I am getting from the uh, PM care, it must have the IoT. And every device is having IoT. Nobody can run away the device and say that, okay, I'm not going. So automatically it will be told that uh, where, where is the location of this particular device. 
including which company has made so that maintenance and other things becomes easier. So yes, this is the last but one line in for you. India wants to become the world leader, world leader in weather and climate prediction, which is very much part of the uh, environment management. So one of you can work on this. Similarly, forecasting of all type of atmospheric and ocean disaster. Now I'll be talking more details, so perhaps touching some of the points which you have told. If there is net primary productivity in nature, nature can consume one particular uh, tons of, of carbon. Beyond that, it doesn't have any capacity. And uh, if you see this, I don't know, this works. Okay, I don't know. But see, if you can uh, see on the right, so I'll first take the left hand side. Initially, the, what nature, and you see the title, what nature provides and what human continues to add and subtract and make, make it disastrous. So, in fact, we all received the global soil without any erosion, but then natural rate of soil production happens 20 to 200 meter per million year, whereas degradation by human being is 2000 to 10,000 meter per million year. Uh, potential net primary productivity of by nature uh, has gone from 1910 to 2005 from 13% to 25%. Whereas now you can still imagine in next uh, 20, last 20 years, in fact, further we have gone from 25 to almost 50%. So it will be like a like a closed room where there will be no, no uh, uh, oxygen to breathe on and access of nitrogen and carbon dioxide and other gases. <clears throat> so we are having 24 ecosystem services which are available and 15 of them are degraded badly. Five of them are mentioned, five are got enhanced. They are very important to say that we must preserve the ecosystem. We are very lucky. <clears throat> As a country, we receive 500 trillion kilowatt hour per year energy from the sun. If we all convert, we'll be having enough energy. That is where the government is working. NP, the NPP, the basis for the all ecosystem already have told. Now, another thing is, uh, see, pollination, 9.5% of the global value of agriculture produces happen, happens because of the pollination. But many of the bees and birds and the animals are getting extinct. We will find that many things will be, uh, many things will get affected. Similarly, that shows the last diagram, bigger thing shows the global nitrogen flow. See the how human created input is going and it is shooting so high and it will become disastrous beyond some value. I think we have to address this. So this is what I told you about the um, ecosystem services. Uh, and uh, India has lost 30% of the wetlands in the last three decades. Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, they were known for the lakes. Even most of them, you find that the college building has been formed because college makers have formed the political connect or something. And I think today, Bangalore doesn't have water. Even for supplying every day more than half an hour. I think this is going to be the disaster of every city to come. We have to make it sure that policies are made in such a way, taxes and subsidy and regulations are made in such a way that uh, human environments are protected. And I know that our generation was best. It has seen the best of the days. It is seeing the worst of the things. But the next generation one is we are going to provide. I think they are going to see only the worst days. I think we have to make it sure that we are giving them at least something which they can further give it to their own children in a better way. Yes, so you must be knowing that cloud seeding is one of the mechanism for uh, weather modification, which many countries, including India, Kanpur is doing. But then, a uh, lot of challenges are there. We can, where people have been found that China has, uh, we can make rains and prevent hailstorms and dust storms. 
So a lot of lofty goals are there. It's difficult. Still, we have not been able to do. But then, China has declared that in 2008 Summer Olympics they did it rain free because of cloud seeding, and uh, they are having the present program of targeting 5.5 million square kilometer by 2025. They claim, and uh, in fact, there were some government data say that many of the northern states they are having a lot of events which are happening. Which are not looking very regular, so how they are getting disrupted? They are also having a program called Sky River Program. So from the region where they are having access of moisture, they want to transport by the sky to the region which are deficient, and that is what they call it. Uh, basically, this is from the Yangtze River to Yellow River. They want to do. So this is a big program. Uh, you can also think of something. Which is lesser cost here, but then equally can do such kind of magical things. Yes, weaponization of uh, weather can be one of the things. So we are doing the weather of mass uh, weapon of mass destruction, whether it is chemical, biological, nuclear. Uh, uh, it can be in the form that, in fact, it has happened during 1972. Vietnam War. Uh, America has made it sure that the uh, Vietnam's food supply chain was disrupted by a program called Operation Popeye. Uh, so this is a scary in fact because return back the weather in its own original form is going to be very, very difficult. And this I'm, I'm trying to see that this is given to me how to handle. Uh, we have to see. Similarly, in fact, it can be applied for the better way also. Hurricanes, lightning, you know, a lot of lightning death happens particularly in UP, Bihar. Almost during rainy season, you find that more than 1,000 people every day, there is a death, such a huge destruction. So can we do something, some technological interventions where we can, uh, we can do something to avoid the lightning and, and uh, uh, heat energy? Similarly, in fact, uh, in 2000, uh, in 1998, there was a, a, a project taken by Terry, um, the Green India 2047 project, and a lot of one nice book, later, book has been published. It talks about what are the things which has happened between 1947 to 1998 for the first 50 years, and what it is going to happen for the next 50 years. So it is, a, it is an alarm bell for the Indian community that where the environment is going to get disturbed and it is a good book in fact you should get it in your library and read these books and, and uh, orient your research programs. So this is the population of India which is going to be there. It will go, go up to 106 billion by 2065-66. And then it will come down. Today, our large population, particularly agriculture, 60% of the population is engaged in agriculture and account, accounts only for 30% of the income. This is a, is a big trouble. And the goal is agricultural dependency should come down from 60 to 12% and able to produce the same amount of output of the crops by 2047. Uh, and our demographic dividend will start decreasing once our larger population becomes old. Today itself, I think people who have sent their children educated in the US, sent to the US, they are finding difficult to, uh, to live their whole life because of the nuclear family. Yes, women empowerment goes without saying, I will not be talking. Military development, a lot of DRDO has developed the program like Agni, Astra, Chua, Sam, Akash Missile. Recent Akash Missile, one can, one can engage four of the targets. Similarly, in fact, Agni was fired in the ICMR where we were able to engage four targets. A lot of uh, new technology, particularly terahertz, quantum, hypersonic vehicles, a lot of research are being done. <coughs> I know that uh, we have to remove the corruption, poverty, and disparity. This cannot be ignored. 
because those black money is still which remains outside the GDP will neither get counted nor accounted. And this is the last slide. So a lot of AI, uh, I don't know, there is a book called Life 3.0 in which he talks about the millions of years back what has happened and he talks about millions of years henceforth what is what life is going to be in the form. And what he says, as, as to the author, is uh, life finally cannot be sent to another planet in present form, so it will be there in the silicon form. So that is why the life uh, 3.0, it says that earlier we were mostly only, only the physical form were there, the rest of brain were there, then brain developed, so we became two, then brain and body both developed and we are taking care become 2.5 and 3 will be there where only the silicon can go if the earth gets into the trouble because the phenomena whatever I have talked about. We are talking, raving about the brain age. What next? At least 20 years I can see being in the IT field is we are going to learn to work with the human robot in phrasing where the, most of the time laborious jobs or DDD, dangerous, dull and, and dirty job that you pass them to the robots, which are automated, which, which can do part of the functions, and we have to upgrade ourselves to the better skills. We hope that uh, a glorious human future, much bigger than the current projections, continue to exist and you flourish. All the best to you, and once again, thank you for that. Thank you, sir, for an enlightening talk. Uh, it seems we have already uh, moved forward in many sectors and significantly contributed to the growth sectors. But there are also some places where we need a lot of self-reliance in place to happen, like agriculture, healthcare, and a few more. Thank you for highlighting the challenges and the opportunities. Uh, now, moving forward to the next segment of uh, this celebration, we have the award ceremony. So, uh, I request the dignitaries to present the awards. The first one is the CSIR Mini Foundation Day Award. We have the first category of individual awards. The first award is the best senior scientist, which goes to Dr. Lal The second award of the best junior scientist goes to Dr. Devi Shri Khan. For the best technical officer, we have Dr. Giri Venkate Shepardi. For the best technician, we have a joint award being given to uh, Mr. Punisro Bhattachare and Ms. Madhuri Urkurkar. Mr. Bhattachare is possibly not there. For the best support persons, there is a certificate of appreciation for commitment, dedication, and belongingness, which is being conferred to Shri Atikuddin, SSA Administration, Mrs. Priya Patel, JSA Administration, yeah. 
श्री अतिकुद्दीन जी एस एस ए एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन The next one is Mrs. Priya Patel, JSA Administration. And Sri PG Kela Pure, ASO, Chosen Purchase Section. The second category of award is Lake Shri PS Memorial Award for Research Scholars. This award carries a citation and a cash prize of rupees 15,000. Uh, amongst this, the best young researcher awards award goes to Srinidhi S, who is an ACSR research fellow. The last category of, of awards is the Divisional Excellence Award, which is being conferred to sophisticated environmental analytical facility. I request the division representatives to please come and take, take the award. Another interesting award category is the Science Models Competitions, which were organized under the banner of Vidyasa in CSIR Navy. So we have the awards for the schools who participated and uh, won the prizes in the model competitions. For the category 1st, 5th to 7th standard, the first prize goes to Lalita Public School, Vardhman Nagar Nagpur. The model title is Use of Science and Technology in Village and City. Since there were not enough entries for the second and third prize, we have restricted it to the first prize only in this category. Second is the category 2, which is 8th to 10th standard. The first prize goes to PM Shri Kendriya Vidyalay or Chanda Madravati. The model name was Garbage Bogi for Waste Management. I call upon the next school also for the second prize, the Royal Gondwana Public School, Shandarpur Nagpur. Their model was based star management. <laughs> the third prize goes to The model name was Agricultural Sustainability and Integrated Farming System. And the consolation prize goes to Lalita Public School again. Model was visualizing.
इस तरह से दूर कर सकते हैं यह हमें हम सब को सोचना है और नीति की स्थापना उन्नीस को भी थी और आज भी एयर पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल है आज भी मैनेजमेंट है अभी वाटर मैनेजमेंट है उसी फील्ड में हम चल रहे हैं लेकिन ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज बढ़ रही है डेवलपमेंट बढ़ रहा है तो साया किस तरह से साय को हमें मिटाना है तो यही मेरे ख्याल से संदेश था तीनों जो लेक्चर सुने मैंने और हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि सर हम तो नेरी में काम कर रहे हैं रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट वो इसी मिशन को अब तो क्लाइमेट चेंज को एनवायरमेंट को इकोलॉजी हो जो भी है जीडीपी जो भी जिस तरह से इकोनॉमी भी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट करते हैं हम जो भी उसको हम सब मिलके एक तरह से कलेक्टिव एफर्ट से हम पर्यावरण सोल्यूशन को बढ़ेंगे तो थैंक यू सर आप लोग आए डी जी सर गौतमी सर आपने अपना वैल्यू जो है सर्वे किया और आप सभी तो यहाँ पे उपस्थित हैं हम उनके कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन को नकार नहीं सकते नहीं और आगे नहीं नकार पाएंगे क्योंकि उनके ऊपर ही हम चलते हैं हम तो साइंटिस्ट हैं सारे लेकिन उनके बिना हमारा काम हो रहा है तो आज भी जिस तरह से हम गेट से लेकर तो पूरे रिपोर्ट से ब्रीफिंग कर रहे हैं तो वो निस्वार्थ तो भावना से कर रहे हैं तो उनके लिए वो बहुत साधनाएं के पात्र है मेरी पर्टिकुलरली और जो कॉम्पिटिशन हो उसमें जो हमारे ड्यूटी थे मैं नाम नहीं लेना चाहूंगा पर्टिकुलरली नहीं तो एक छोटा तो दूसरा नाराज हो जाएगा तो हाँ वो होता है ना लोगों की टेंडेंसी है तो मैं नाम लेना जरूरी प्रिफर नहीं कर रहा क्योंकि पांच मिनट में मेरे से मेरा काम नहीं बनेगा मैं नहीं कर पाऊंगा मैं शायद अगर उनका नाम